All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we live on Instagram. We live on Facebook Live. Uh, welcome. So today's seminar is called uh, "Understand the Fourth Industrial Revolution Easily and Thrive." Um, let me see. Let me just pick up my notes. Uh, we are about what ten minutes late. Uh, let me just get the the notes so that I explain everything in order. Um, so what is this damn uh, fourth industrial revolution? Um, it's it's like the the happening topic now. Uh, a lot of people find it hard to understand it. Um, just let me know if you can hear me on on on. Uh, on, on Facebook and, and Instagram. I don't know if something is not working, but I think all is in order. So the fourth industrial revolution, how do we understand it? Um, it's, it's a bit of a tricky one for, for a lot of people, including myself at first, to sort of um, understand it. Um, um, the way I'll, I'll explain it tonight, I think it, it makes it uh, easy. You'll sort of understand it in a in a better way easily from a first principle perspective. And, um, you know, if, if you understand something from a first principle perspective, how it comes about, how it works. I mean, for me, it's just a, it's, it's just the naming of, of an era, uh, maybe sort of rather a political naming, because there has been a lot of other revolutions uh you know they say the fourth industrial revolution that was obviously the first but before then there were so many other revolutions the fire revolution all, all sort of uh, you know you can call them revolutions because we humans are always you know discovering uh new ways of doing things we call it technologies we we, 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 always, we always develop all different sort of things that are of utility to us let me just read out this, um, like the sort of formal um, explanation of this for IR. Yeah, I read this thing, this thing in, in small font. Let me just enlarge my screen here a bit. Um, all right, it, it's defined as um, the fourth industrial revolution goes goes like this. The, the definition: the first fourth industrial revolution is characterized by a fusion of technologies. That is blurring the lines between physical, digital, and biological spheres, collectively referred to as cyber physical systems. It is marked by emerging technology breakthroughs in a number of fields, including robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, quantum computing, biotechnology, the Internet of Things, uh, the Industrial Internet, Internet of Things decentralized uh, consensus, fifth generation wireless technology, which is 5G, um, additive manufacturing, which is 3D printing. Like it's a, it's a long explanation and it loses a, a lot of people. Um, so, okay, let's start. What, what is true is that we know that um, we are in some sort of era where technological innovation has uh, gone further than five years ago than ten years ago um, in 2005 I remember I was doing my first year we were using um, what, what phone was I using it was that era of 65 color phones it wasn't yet called smartphones and today we're using all the smartphones they're just, they're just like a, a computer really they can do pretty much what you can do in a computer and well the nice thing is that they are mobile um years ago there wasn't that so we can whatever you think you know people naming it the fourth industrial revolution it's a bunch of bs or what but uh technologically we are advanced we are we are moving so we are we've always been moving so in in biology they say um human beings became human beings about 300 350 years ago which is sort of an an unimaginable time so you can imagine um, from that time we've been figuring out to create things rather man-made innovation. So tonight I'll, I'll, I'll explain um, to really get to a clear understanding or rather maybe what I call a simple understanding of 4IR is if I, I, I go through it through a um, sort of a biological context, you'll just bear with me. 
uh, I guess, well, to me, it makes it uh, rather less boring. So, as human beings, uh, we are the only species that has sort of the only mind that we have. And um, unlike any other animals, we, we can make things. Um, our cousins, uh, the monkeys, you know, if you give them a, a banana smoothie, they will enjoy it. But they cannot make a blender that, you know, sort of blends a smoothie. But we humans can. We can sort of make so many uh, things, non-biological, we can't really, you know, make biological things, although technology is such that, or rather, biological innovation that we can mess about with, with innovation, or, you know, there's cloning now, yes, I guess we can mess about with, with innovation. So, um, this brain of ours, it's a biological gift, so I want you to bear in mind that, although we think of innovation, but think of it as a a gift from biology because all these things we can do uh, with our brains we can do them through I mean a brain is a, is, a, is, a, is a biological evolution it's a biological adaptation nature gave us this brain biology gave us this brain so yeah like I said I'm gonna take it from a biological sort of perspective so about well when life first happened on earth it came through uh singular single cell organisms right so single cell organisms what sort of the biological literature says is that they had some sort of uh, marriage some sort of incest and they made uh, multicellular organisms and we humans are multicellular organisms, which is about uh, around 4 billion years or so. So, in this context, I'm saying that, well, I mean, the biological, you know, uh, tree, it's quite vast. It's, it's animals, it's bacteria, it's archaea, it's fungi, I don't know, whatever I'm forgetting. So, it's six, uh, six uh, branches of the biological tree. So, through... Four billion years ago, you know, uh, biology has just been sort of um, connecting with itself. Um, single cellular organisms, like I said, having some sort of marriage. And, you know, moving on to the next thing, creating from singular cellular organisms, they created uh, multicellular organisms. And even the multicellular organisms, it branched out. They say life began in the in water and so for for a couple of years or billions of years not a couple exactly uh life existed in in in, in water until it branched out um so we are at a point where or rather billions of years later here we are as humans so life has been you know evolving creating one species after another one species of an, an after another they call it evolution with this context i'm stealing from how biological innovations happen or rather how biological evolution happens it's also a marriage it's it's a it's a marriage of 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 organisms uh, coming together to create something that didn't exist before so in a again when when we look like i said um biological man-made innovation uh, we should look at it from from it's a gift it, it, it happens because biology gifted us this brain so uh, through evolution biology gifted us a brain gifted us a brain which could um, create all this man-made things that we have today um, before I mentioned that uh, the literature says that we humans or the call the call us the homo sapiens we happened 300 350 years ago that's when we sort of branched out and today here we are let me let me take it slowly easy because i'm just i'm sweating here um so nature gave us this 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 brain that we have and um with this brain we are able to create so many things uh, we've created them you can imagine 300 years ago to today we've created so so many things so think of it this way right like biological 
innovation happens through mixing of two or more components or rather different organisms to create you know a variety of other species or you know organisms or colors multicellular organisms uh, oh sorry instagram people so when we innovate as humans what we are doing essentially is that we are creating something that adds utility to us as humans but what we do essentially is that we are also combining things think of a chair a chair also is a, is a combination of is a combination of things it's a combination of what uh, you think of a chair it's a structure a shape or rather a geometric shape that allows human beings to sit right it doesn't allow a monkey doesn't allow a dog to sit it's, it's structured in a way or it's carved or shaped in a way that it allows a human being to sit now they are you are, you are essentially mixing that shape or that geometric shape with a hard substance because we are you can say what we are carbon beings meaning we are we are physical like we've, we've got you can uh you know put a, a finger through my skin and it'll, it'll go the other way so we we need a hard substance for us to sit so when you're making a chair you're fusing what that geometric shape with a hard substance that hard substance is what it could be wood i don't know if the first chair, i think the first chair was you can say maybe carved out of stone or you know so you're mixing a stone and a shape it gives you a chair so that chair is something that gives uh people utility now you can innovate a chair further how do you do that you can make a chair that's mixed with plastic and wood that mixed with wood plastic or steel any combination of those things so innovation it's mixing things to create something that is useful to man that it has utility that has utility for human beings um now there are all sort of chairs today even if you add a cushion you know you're adding a fabric a cushion into a chair you're also innovating that chair if there wasn't a chair with with uh with cushioning before now you just created a chair a chair with with cushioning so you are mixing things to innovate to create something of that is of utility to human beings um today there are so many chairs you can have an electric chair so electric chair mixes um a motor engine that generates fuel maybe I don't know through maybe you're, you're pouring petrol or it uses a battery and even a battery again it's, it's an innovation it's a mixture of things it's maybe the plastic that contains it the chemicals all the chemicals that go in it and the way they are structured for them to you know give utility in terms of a battery a motor engine also is what it's a a mixture of things it's still um, no, however it produces energy Maybe it's through uh, petrol or diesel. You know, we are mixing those things to create something that is of utility to human beings. Now, it's it's the it's true also with 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 biology. Like like I explained that biology also um, innovates or evolves through fusing organisms to create different species. And Remember the link I, 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 I talked of saying, uh, think of innovation as sort of um, an extension, extension of biology because this brain of ours that we can create all this sort of things with, it's a biological gift. So it all starts there. Um, another example, let me give example with what? With, um, with, uh, video streaming like we are streaming now so video streaming mixes what uh before there was the internet or rather it mixes the internet it mixes video now before there was uh, the internet video was there there were mechanisms of broadcasting or reproducing video or creating a video so video has been something that always uh, that has been there for many years preceding the the internet and now in 1991 uh well the internet was created or rather the technology towards the internet was being tinkered with in the 70s the dates don't matter i'm just explaining the 
um, sort of the principle of, of understanding innovation. Now, with 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 video streaming, like I'm saying, it mixes what it mixes. Um, meaning there was video first. Video was created first, and internet was cre was created later. Someone thought, well, when I mix these things, it could make something uh, that is more innovative, that is more agile, which is what, which is video streaming. So like it, it sits again with, with the concept that innovation is mixing of, of innovation of innovations. So we human beings, we keep creating all different uh, sort of innovations. We keep creating them. So now today in 2020, there's so many innovations. So when you want to innovate, you, it's you mixing whatever is in existence to create something, you know, that's not in existence because everything new or anything novel that's not yet in existence can only be created through mixing things that exist so i hope it gives you comfort that you know all the tools that you need to innovate are all the things that are in existence it's not something that's not in existence yet so we can only create something that doesn't exist through fusing the things that exist already So like I'm saying with, with, with video streaming, also it's, a, it's an innovation. It's a fusion of what? Of internet and video. Before then, there was what? There was, um, remember, there was um, music streaming. Music streaming also, it's a mixture of what? The internet and uh, digital music, which is, you can, you can store music in different formats. It's wave, it's MP3. So it's also a mixture of those things. So when you innovate, you're mixing things, you're creating something agile, something that it hasn't been there before, and that is of utility to people, and people can use it to uh, whatever benefit it is to them. If not, they won't use them. So um, innovation has to go in line with, or whatever man-made things that is innovative has to go in line with it creating use or utility for mankind. Um, let me see. So, um, synonymously, how we innovate is just like how biology innovate, innovates. We are mixing things. So obviously, biological and um, man-made sort of innovations are, are, are different, but the concept is the same. The connection there is that um, biology gifted us this brain, and then with this brain, we can innovate things. Let me see here. I'm just making sure that I'm not missing any any step. So when you're thinking of, you know, the fourth industrial revolution, uh, really is just a naming of an era. Imagine if we we've been alive as human beings since uh, three hundred thousand years or so ago. So we've been creating all these innovations. We've been, you know, discovering a lot of things. We've been discovering how to make man-made fire at will we've been uh, discovering how to make driving cars i mean how to make cars how to make aeroplanes we've been innovating all those things so someone decides that you know at the brink of this innovation uh, i think it's only fair if we call it first industrial revolution meaning industrial meaning it was sort of the commercialization uh, commercialization of the innovations that human beings had made or have been making so you're sort of, um, you know, making them of industry or commercializing them so that instead of, you know, me producing all the food that I eat, someone can manufacture the food uh, cost effectively. Uh, you can call that capitalism and I can concentrate on maybe, I don't know, uh, making cars or pursuing whatever interests that I have or anything. So that's really what industrial industrialization is about. It's capitalizing of, of innovation. And someone decides to call it, call it um, first industrial revolution. It's just basically a name. So what you want, first, second, third, fourth, it doesn't necessarily matter if you understand uh, what in, in each um, um step of or rather first or second industrial revolution was happening because that information is there on the in you can go check it but the principle is to understand that when they named it that they were naming really what we were doing as human beings innovating and then someone named it first industrial revolution second industrial revolution third industrial revolution now this fourth one i explained this 
I, I, may, I read out this uh, definition where they call it it's a fusion or a blood fusion of a fusion of, of, of technologies, nanotechnology, internet of things, biotechnology. All this information is, is just what, I, what, what I, I was saying. So when you create a chair, you're mixing what? A shape that allows a human being to see it. You're mixing it with what? With a hard, hard substance or it could be steel, it could be plastic, it could be whatever. So it's all fusion. So now we are at a stage where we call it fourth industrial revolution. Um, the World uh, Eco Economic Forum decided to call it that. It's a definition. But the case is that we've innovated, we've created all this innovation that put us at a point where we have nanotechnology, we have 3D printing, we have 5G, I'm sure. 6G will come. I read the other day that um, China is tinkering with, with 5G innovation. Um, all this innovation that we do have now it stays with the principle that to innovate you have to fuse to create to create something that doesn't exist so even the sixth industrial revolution what will happen in it is that will it will happen with us mixing the things that we've created in the fifth industrial revolution to create something that is of utility to people that is agile and perhaps that is novel well it has to be novel for it to be innovative, to be something that hasn't been then hasn't been there before. So this explanation, you know, however difficult and sort of academic it sounds, it's just basically saying, you know, fourth industrial revolution is, is a fusion of those technologies I've mentioned. So it is just that. It's just you know, ten years from now we would have innovated to another stage uh, where we have newer technologies that didn't exist. Uh, that don't exist now. So even then, when we innovate further, it will be, will be us mixing those technologies to create something that, that doesn't exist. So 5G as well, I don't necessarily know the technicalities of what goes on in 5G. Uh, internet, again, is just coding and you sort of creating, uh, you know, it, it's sort of deep technology that I don't necessarily ex again, understand. From a, but from a principal perspective, um, it also it's a fusion of, of code of uh, you, fusion of code you're fusing it with a computer and it, it you know it, it, it allows you to connect wirelessly to other to other devices using maybe uh, cables or areas whatever whatever thing that's that's used basically that's it you know if, if there's any topic that you wanna you want to understand just know that uh, or rather that any technology that you want to understand just know that it's a that technology, how it came about, also was created through mixing things, things that were in existence, and they created it to being something that they didn't exist before. So you can go break it down and figure out what particles went into making uh, that particular innovation or technological innovation. So it shouldn't scare you. So third industrial revolution again, it was it was a fusion of other technologies. Uh, the second industrial revolution also it was just a, a fusion of, of technologies that were existing in first industrial revolution and they were mixed in such a way that um, they created something of utility to humans so because if it's not of utility to humans then you know we, we won't really use it so we won't call it an innovation that's basically you know understanding what in, if an innovation happens through mixing things that are, that are existing and then how you mix them is that they have to create or rather when you combine them uh, they have to create things that that add utility to human beings uh, internet probably um, years ago uh, before aeroplanes were created before motor engines were created rather even before any electronic devices were, were created I'm sure human beings then our ancestors we're thinking, oh, maybe I can create something that can fly. Wow, there wasn't the technology then to create something that could fly. Years later, someone creates a motor engine. Now, that motor engine gave life to, or rather gave possibility to many other innovations to be created. Aeroplane, because, you know, it has to be propelled by some sort of a motor, and that motor runs on some sort of fueling uh either it's it's petrol it's diesel which whichever way uh, i don't know if now they are battery operated uh aeroplanes i'm sure someone will create something like that now even today when you, you can think of there probably you because innovation sometimes or rather 
what I think I can innovate or create is not necessarily maybe the same as, as, as what you think you can create. Perhaps sometimes it is. Uh, sorry for that. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps sometimes it is. Now, think of before there was um, video streaming. You could have thought of creating, perhaps when there was internet, you, can, you could have uh, thought of creating, you know, a video that you can watch virtually. You can watch on, on a computer. So if you were the first one to think of that idea to fuse it, so it, it looks so simple. Maybe it is simple. You could have figured it out. Even today, you can actually come about or think of something that's not in existence and you create it. That could be of utility to human beings. So man-made innovation and biological innovation, they're sort of synonymous. It all happens with uh, the mixing of things to create the next uh, species that was in, in existence. Um, there's a term in biology called acceptation. Uh, acceptation, uh, to explain it, um, it's where, well, uh, let me give a biological context. Feathers in, 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 in birds, uh, were an evolutional trait that was meant to uh, keep regulate their body temperature and uh, through evolution they became of another use not no longer just a regulation of body temperature but what but flying so you can think of the internet uh, as sort of acceptation because uh really internet has really fused into many things so uh in any call it industrial revolution there's always a, this technology that can be used uh or rather fused in different other innovations you can internet i think it's one of them sugar it's 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 one of them we human beings um developed a taste for sugar through fruits because what fruits it's food they give you energy now, because we are innovative, someone uh, created processed sugar because we've, we've evolved uh, to in liking sugar. That processed sugar then can be used to innovate other things. Could be cake, uh, muffins, uh, all different candies. So, you know, sugar, think of it something that's an innovation that's just maneuvering and it has a lot of other uses internet uh, basically was created to share in, uh, information or text or you know they say for academic it was used to maybe share academic uh, records or to store uh, data digital or to transfer it now later on it 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 it, it, it uh, got to be used for many other different things now we've got apps uh, video streaming, you can watch, you can go on to uh, dating app. So really internet, it's, it's kind of like sugar, just maneuvers and creates uh, all sorts of new innovation. So maybe a way to think of innovation is to think of what technology, internet definitely will be there. Uh, motor engine has been really used in so many things. You have a wheelchair, you have a lawnmower, you have aeroplane, you have a car. So it's one that technology that can, that I can say has you know it's 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 a uh, that has been accepted in into many other innovations to create many other innovations sugar internet uh, you can think of many other things that actually do that so our, our, the thinking here is that rather than just thinking of understanding fourth industrial revolution it's it's really to understand innovation how it comes about because it's well it's a fusion of things. If it's a fusion of things, you also can be able to fuse things. Now, since it's a fusion of things, what, how to be an innovator is that you have to have insights into different things. Just not just one topic. So, uh, if you were creating a car, you can imagine all the different particles that go into a car. So you would have to have sort of insights into all those different sort of things that go into making a car but you don't have to know everything in detail you can borrow that you can borrow that by partnering by hiring people by hiring engineers elon elon musk um did he is, is not per se like a you know a phd engineer is an engineer through 
uh, being curious and, and, and creating and, and, um, and going and creating things that don't exist. He doesn't know everything to, that's, uh, that has to do with, you know, uh, aerospace, that has to do with, 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 with cars. He hires that, but he's got a mind that um, he can figure out maybe we can create an electric car. Maybe we can go to Mars. So he, he rallies all this expertise, he borrows it. Again, it's just insights into those sort of things insights into knowing okay maybe an engineer will help me in sort of solving this riddle or solving this uh, technological uh, thing that i want to take to the next level so you have to, to to innovate you have to have insights into a bunch of things sometimes you can even borrow those insights i will give an example um even writing a book so my next book is called um innovate next it's it fuses biology and entrepreneurship I don't know much about um you know, I'm having these pains because I was I was running and I had stopped for like a week so yeah my back is kind of like chilling me now when I move a bit uh where was I uh I'll figure it out <laughs> uh, all right let me go here um so innovation is reached accidentally, spontaneously, or deliberately. Accidentally, I'll give you an example. Uh, in 1927, Alexander Fleming uh, discovered penicillin. So penicillin is the world's first antibiotic. It can be used to heal, uh, to treat wounds. There was a time where um, if you had a cut, that cut could kill you. But because you know all the inflammation and and, and bad bacteria, um, you know, taking over your your wound. But now he discovered um, penicillin. How he discovered it is that he, I guess, he left his lab to go on a weekend away or a holiday. I don't remember what it was. And then when he came back, uh, he saw that a mold had developed because so, like, maybe his you know his lab was dirty or something and he investigated that that um that mold and it created something that he soon discovered that it's penicillin and then penicillin can be used to what to create it's, it's an, an antibiotic basically so that was him discovering it accidentally uh accidentally or you know deliberately elon musk is trying to go to mars you can say that's a deliberate um venture uh the scientists who are trying to create a vaccine for corona i guess they've they've, they've had some success because there are several companies or nations that have come across or created a, a vaccine so they're also trying to create it uh, deliberately you also can you know bump into something just uh spontaneous oh, okay i've figured out this thing mixes with this thing it creates the uh something that you know that it can be of utility to people and perhaps it's something that's not in existence so anyone can be any an innovator i believe but it really i think helps when you are someone who's trying to figure out other things because then already you are fit to investigate whatever a thing that you discover that's you know of of you know of utility to people so that's you know one of the ways how innovation is 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 is, um, is discovered so to be one to be an innovator to co to be any contributor to the fourth industrial revolution or the fifth industrial revolution that surely will come i don't know maybe some of us won't be here um it's just to have insight into things to be curious to think of creating things that are not in existence just pursuing your curiosity and, and expanding your insights in, in all into all sorts of different topics that you, that are of interest to you uh with writing books i think my books are a bit different uh, although i'm not necessarily talking about new things but the way i'm they are shaped or modeled it's it's new uh rather novel especially this coming one uh, this coming book innovate next uh it's novel in that i'm just interested in all sorts of different topics and because I've got insights into those topics, I can marry them and sort of uh, prepare models that were not in existence to explain different phenomena. 
and all and I'm, I'm using concept that are already in existence to sort of create other concepts that are not in existence so remember like i think it's an nb for this webinar that um anything new can only be created with whatever is in in existence uh currently uh so that's just in a nutshell understanding the fourth industrial uh revolution it's, it's quite that easy uh the definition here like i said it says it's a a fusion that's characterized by uh a blood line between technologies such as nanotechnology uh by biological what is it uh, quantum computing biotechnology biotechnology also it's a fusion of what it's it's a fusion of you know uh we're in medicine we're fusing electronics into biology think of a um what is it a, a, a hard pacemaker that machine that sort of paces people whose heartbeats are not is it not in sync in sync or what but it, it's that it's, it's that technology it sort of regulates the pacing of the heartbeat so that technology has its genesis in electronics in radio radio is it radio i think it's radio electronics so you are fusing it into what into biology into healing people into medicine so it becomes biotechnology a hearing aid it's a technique it's, it's mixing biology with what with technology it also falls under biotechnology um i think last year or year before last uh the university of uh pretoria they did the first um they created um this i think it's an ear bone transplant they created bones or rather they were replacing i don't know damaged bones in in the ears uh they recreated them through the 3d printing i don't know if i think that that wasn't possible before 3d printing because 3d printing can really uh, print things that are small but you know perfectly i think in a way that um human hands cannot in a way that you know the existing technology uh, that's used to make other things like molding cannot so it's it's basically that let me see i just want to re-explain a bunch of things um so at the start really for the industrial revolution is just human beings going forward with being innovative with creating innovations and what they're doing it through a brain that um, nature gave us so innovation however you want to think of it it's it's, it's it, it is happening or you are able to innovate because of, of of biology so biology gave us this brain that can figure things out and create things create chairs create uh wheeled chairs put chairs into airplanes uh create airplanes create internet create video create video streaming create all this innovation that we have biotechnology nanotechnology it's a brain that we have so however you call it fourth first fifth industrial revolution it's just basically us human beings um going forward with innovating we take internet we take it to video streaming we take it to many other things we take sugar um from making processed sugar and then we can fuse that sugar into muffins into into cake into candy into whole sort of things uh that's basically what we are able to do as as human beings so when someone really asks you what what is the fourth industrial revolution you don't have to be scared as long as you know that it's just us human beings going forward with creating or rather innovating things and innovation happens through mixing things that are in existence to create something that's not in existence like i mean just think of it logically you cannot create something new out of something that doesn't exist it has to you only can only do it with something that can exist there was a point where there were no airplanes and people we couldn't create it aeroplanes because they were not uh there wasn't a motor engine and then motor engine really allowed for aeroplanes to be possible not that people didn't think of creating flying saucers but just maybe they were not possible before motor engine and then motor engine gave you know wave too many things cars lawn mowers all sorts of different things boats ships all these sort of different things um
just funny because everything happens within sort of anything on earth it's what nature gave us um and we are able to manipulate it through what through because this brain of ours can figure a whole lot of things out uh yeah i think i've i've, I've you know reached rather gave sufficient explanation by the way this video also will be on i'm gonna delete the one on instagram because i'm using a low pixel phone and i'll keep the one on facebook and also we will take it to youtube so by at least monday it will it will be up on youtube uh the notification will be given just go to youtube find Tiseto maloma subscribe to my channel or also go to tisetomaloma.com subscribe to my blog that notification will also go there and um all my books oh flip i don't have books on me no buy all my books uh i'll list them shortly uh they're available in all bookstores they are available online also on take a lot on amazon um so i've got uh, the anxious entrepreneur i've got forget the business plan use the short model i've got township based fast track i've got township based adjacent and there is tales of an african entrepreneur and there's a book that i just recently released called understanding the fourth industrial revolution and innovation easily for now it's only available on amazon so you can go check it out uh, next year perhaps from uh, february it will be in uh, local bookstores but for now it's not it's quite an interesting book uh, i've had a couple of you know you know interesting reviews on it so all my books are available in all bookstores go check them out with that i thank you very much for attending so i'll see if the uh if you've got questions i guess you can just type them in the comments i'll maybe wait for five minutes and if no questions i'll call it a night thank you very much for being in attendance see a couple of people online here so on facebook uh if you've got questions you can pull them through yeah all right yeah it's it's kind of you know i i stumbled into this uh, topic of explaining industrial revolutions just through i guess just curiosity and yeah now we're here so um on my blog just search fourth industrial revolution they are on com. there are a bunch of articles that explain it or i mentioned the book that which is available on amazon and will be in bookstores from next year oh flip it's hot in this house and also i become sweaty after taking a bath i was just straight out of Bathing when I, you know, got online. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, guys, for being in attendance. Uh, I'm calling it a night. Thank you very much. Remember, the video won't be on Instagram. It will be on Facebook and YouTube. Look it. Look out for it. Uh, at least by Monday, it should be up on those sites. All right. Cheers. Have a lovely evening.